It's so good to uh, see so many of you. Um, I know that we have passed uh, in you know different ministry together at, at different times, and so it's good to see you again. Um, at least one of you I have known for over a dozen years and traveled thousands of miles with, and I'll let you guys figure out who that is. But um, if you know anything about me, one of my favorite jobs in the world is to be a dad. I have uh, three kiddos. Um, my daughter, Medina, is right now out in Utah attending a camp uh, that she attends every year. And I have two sons here with me, Joshua and Zion. They're my little clones, so they're not hard to uh, identify when you see them. But we were, yesterday, my, my wife and I, we woke up really early in the morning and drove down to Florida because my boys have been in conservatory for the last four weeks. Um, learning music. They, they are music junkies, brass bandsmen. And so we picked them up in Florida. We flew out of Florida and we landed in Chicago. And as we were in the bathroom at the airport, my son Joshua says to me, uh, Dad, I think this is like the fifth time you've been to the Central Territory in the last two years. Um, and he's an officer's kid. He said, is, is there something I should know or... <laughs> And I said, I think we're good, buddy. I mean, other, other than the Baileys being here, you know, that's the wild card. Uh, but I think everything is fine. I have, I have no plans. And so um, my perfect partner, the one whom my soul loves, is Everett. And you will see her and get to know her. I think she'll be here um, most every day during our uh, time together. Well, I've been given about five minutes to give an introduction of our time together and our journey this week. And a, little a little bit more? Okay, so I'll, I'll behave myself. Grace. Grace. Amen. I receive it, okay? <laughs> but I, I know, having been a core officer, I know once folks start to look at their right. clock, yeah, I'll, I'll get back on my flight path. All right, so uh, one, of, one of the most persistent and common questions on the minds and mouths of people today especially and throughout history is, what is God like? Really, it's a, it's a very important question. What is God like? Down through the ages, humanity has asked whether God is a celestial body, our forebears tried to worship the sun, moon, and stars, or whether God resides in the hills and the mountains. Some people in history even worshiped mountains, thinking that perhaps that is God. They ask questions like, can you form your own God? Or does God form you? Is he creator only? Or is he okay with being your creation? Is he one? Or is she many? There's Islam, Hinduism, those things. Is God an enlightened one? Is he like Confucius or Buddha? Or is he a lowly servant and all-around nice guy, the cultural Jesus that we know, cultural friendly Jesus? Well, in these days when it's hard to know who and how God is, especially and even if you hang out in sacred spaces, we need a refreshed, and clear, scriptural profile of his character. Who is he? A profile of his character that is free from cultural conveniences and our political preferences. In the Gospel of John chapter 14, I invite you to turn there with me. The Gospel of John chapter 14, Jesus is sitting with some dudes that he has hung out with for a long time. These are guys who have lived with him for the past several years up to this point. John chapter 14, he's there with his disciples and he is talking to them. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Glory to God for that. You know the way to the place where I 
am going. And then Thomas said to him, Thomas, we'll talk about him uh, further this week, one of my favorite folks in Scripture. He says, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered those famous words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. What, Philip said? Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered him, don't you know me? Even after I've been with you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father's in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. You know, it brings me some comfort to know as I um, get into um, my my faith and trying to understand who and how God is, uh, what he says and what he doesn't say, what he does, what he doesn't do, what he likes, what he doesn't like, who he is, who he is not. It helps me to know that these folks who tooled around the Decapolis with him uh, for at least three years still said, Lord, Show us the Father. It helps me to know that. And one of the things that we're going to discuss this this week is his profile or his character traits, the ways that you can identify God at work in other people and in you. And we'll also be taking very close looks at the gospel so that we can see the character traits of God the Father as evidenced in God the Son. Would you turn with me just really quickly to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Because the writer of Hebrews says something that's very important. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, in the New International Version, it reads this way, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the partial represent, no, exact representation of his being. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. So this week, let's pretend that statement, Hebrews chapter one, verse three, is the thesis for our time together. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. That will be our thesis statement for our time together this week, and we'll spend our mornings searching the literature and the gospel narrative for proof of God's glory, his profile in the face of Jesus Christ. And so I'll see you at 09 right here tomorrow. The Lord bless you.